Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and to what I'm hoping is going to be a video to help other people that go kayaking, go kayak fishing, um, basically any discipline around the sea because I want to share with you something that most people probably wouldn't share um, out of embarrassment, out of fear of ridicule, all sorts. Um, to be quite honest, I don't care what you call me because it's nothing I haven't called myself today and you can tell me I should have done this, should have done that. You don't have to, I can save your breath now. I know what I should have done. I know what I should have done differently. And I know um, the mistakes I made. It was a very, very critical and scary learning curve I went through today. And I'm gonna share the story with you now. Um, sorry if it bores you, but it is a matter of life and death. I mean. I was very close to losing my life today and um, if it wasn't for a couple of things, one, the fact I didn't go out alone, I went out with an experienced kayaker for my first trip out to sea, um, that was crucial, as was this radio. This is a Standard Horizon HX890 and it has the DHC emergency button. This was absolutely vital and it, it no doubt saved my life today. Now I'm going to start from the beginning, I'm going to tell you a bit about you know what happened, what today started out as and basically what it finished as and um, yeah it was not a good day. So I got a kayak probably a month ago, three weeks ago and I've been practicing on the lake. I went down the canal a few times. I've learned the boat. I, I sort of knew where its limitations and its stability, and it was a very stable boat, and it's actually the Feel Free Moken 12.5 V2. It's very comfortable, it's a very stable boat. It's not the quickest boat by any means. It's, it's actually quite slow. I think even today, paddling against the tide in the chop, I was only getting sort of two, three mile an hour. It wasn't very quick at all. Um, my friend Barry, he's got a, an Ocean kayak, I think, and it's a, a bit longer, it's a lot, lot slim line, it, it cut through the waves a lot better. Um, you know, stable-ish, you know, they're about the same. Um, he had no problems. Now, I didn't at first. The Mokum was handling the chop really well. The, you know, the boat was riding them absolutely perfect. The issue came when we got about a mile from our launch point. Um, we were going along the coast and uh, it was about 50, 55 feet of water beneath us um, in this bay that we, we found ourselves in to try and shut from the wind a bit because the wind had changed. And um, we decided to anchor. We decided to anchor and sort of fish there in sort of the relative shelter of this bay. Now, Barry started launching his anchor. He was you know, checking it out and what I had done is I had reached round um, behind my seat therefore tipping the kayak slightly now that wasn't a problem because the Mokun has like two planes of stability it's got its main as it sits on the water and then it's got the, the sort of catamaran hull so when it tips slightly it's still on like a level um, a level base basically however um, because I'd been drifting I wasn't paddling I wasn't using my rudder um, my Mokun had slightly turned on to the waves. So the waves were now coming side on to me. And obviously that coupled with the fact that I was leaning, I went over. Um, the kayak flipped, um, you know, everything was tethered. I didn't lose a great deal. I think I lost some mackerel and, you know, my tackle wallet thing that I had in my bait bag, um, which was unzipped at the time. But um, other than that, everything else, absolutely fine. Now, the problem arose when I hadn't practiced self-rescue, okay? I just assumed being a man and being, you know, gung-ho and a bit cocky, if you like. I thought, well, it can't be that hard, so I won't bother. Um, I was due to go on a course to practice all this last week, last Thursday, um, but unfortunately the weather cancelled that and I didn't get to go on it, but this opportunity to go out today arose and I thought it can't be that bad. I'll do the course later on, but for now, let's just go out and have some fishing time. That really did bite me in the ass today because 
not only did it take us, both me and Barry, Barry was absolutely fucking fantastic. If it wasn't for him, like I say, I wouldn't be talking to you now. Um, it took us about six minutes to flip the kite back up. We were fighting these, the increasing chop, the wind had changed direction, just like that. So from what, going from fairly calm to pretty rough um, in a split second, really. And it, it just became hard work. Now, I was already tired because we had been fighting the chop and the, the swale, paddling out to our mark. And also the fact that I haven't got a trolley for my moken yet. And the wheel on the keel and probably 200 meters of sand. It was a long old truck down there. I had to literally drag the kayak through the sand. And I was already knackered by this point. So we'd flipped the kayak and I was holding on for dear life. And again, people, another common misconception, people must think that when you go in the water next to your kayak, you just bob, sort of chest height, but you don't. Your PFD will obviously help, it's a vital piece of kit, but you're still up to your neck in water, really, and you're still probably from your chin to the top of your kayak, so a good six inches, um, because the kayak is a lot more buoyant than you. So 80% of your body is under the water you've then got to try and pull yourself up and out and um, get back on your kayak at the same time distributing your weight as you come up across the kayak so you don't flip it again um, I couldn't do it long story short I couldn't get back on the kayak now things were getting pretty scary now because I was getting very cold because again another mistake I made today was it was sunny it was 18 degrees celsius I went out in shorts t-shirt and a pfd um, my wetsuit was in the car, which would have, one, aided with a bit of buoyancy, and two, kept me a lot warmer, because after this point, it's probably been about 15 minutes of me bobbing along with my kayak in the water um, with these swells, and it, it just turned nasty very, very quickly. Um, and I was panicking at this point. You know, um, I didn't realise it at the time, but I had jellyfish around my legs that were stinging me. Um, and it is hard work holding on to your kayak, even just sitting there doing nothing is hard work. I've got um, bruises all up my arm, you can see here. I've got them all under my underside of my arm, bruising everywhere. Um, I feel like I've been in the gym lifting weights for the last three days straight. Um, you know, I feel drained. And at the time, the adrenaline was keeping me going. You know, I was fighting, but I was knackered. Um, it's hard work, I hold, just holding on to your kayak in the, the current con the conditions that we were in. It was extremely hard work. And um, Barry, I think, got to the point where it's like, well, you're not getting back on it. We need to get you. We were probably 100 meters or so from the sort of a rocky, coasty beach type thing. Um, basically safety. So he suggested he towed me and my kayak in to this little bay, this beach, which was a great idea. I held on to the back of my moken. He, you know, attached the line, towed me towards this beach, but it was the wrong time of the tide. The tidal current was incredibly strong um and him trying to bless him paddle his kayak as well as the weight of me and mine just wasn't really getting us anywhere so i made the decision to swim to shore so he didn't have the added weight of me to pull as well as my kayak and um i must have done 50 meters but i wasn't getting anywhere i was at that point panicking big time um i kept bobbing my head under, I was taking in water, I was now getting very, very cold. And um, Barry, again, just turned around and come straight back, picked me up and I did like a, a sloth hold on the bow of his boat. I had my hands around the front and my legs sort of slightly kicking slash holding onto the bottom of his kayak. And it's at this point I thought, even if he gets me in, I'm beyond it now. I will not be able to paddle back um the mile or so back to the beach where we launched the conditions were getting worse <clears throat> there was no way i was going to be able to do it i grabbed my my vhf flicked 
the cover and push the DSC button. For three seconds, it beeps and that was it. Now what I didn't know at the time is even if I tried calling for help, where we were, there's 100 feet, you know, cliffs all around us in this bay, I wouldn't have got VHS signal. Even when, after I pushed this and I thought we're safe, we're back on land, because we literally landed, got on land, and within a minute or so of being on land, the Coast Guard had got my distress call from the DSC. There was a Sea King helicopter hovering above us, and there was three lifeboats speeding towards the beach that we were on. Now, what I didn't know is when I tried radioing this Sea King helicopter to say, you know, we're now currently safe, we just need a bit of assistance, um, stand down, he wasn't answering because I had no VHF reception at all. So if I had just a basic VHF radio, I would have been shit creek without a paddle. Literally would. I would have had no way of getting hold of anyone. My phone was out of signal. Um, and yeah, it, it would have turned nasty because, you know, I would have been there for hours before the, the conditions calmed down again for me to get back in. And by that time, I mean, I was already on the verge of hypothermia anyway. I was gone past the point of shivering um, and I was in real trouble, basically. Um, but luckily, I mean, from the, sec the time it took me to push this button to the time that the Coast Guard was on scene, it was six minutes. Um, they towed my kayak back in and they got me on the, the rescue rib that they had that could make it that close in the shore. Um, at that point, they sort of got an idea of what the problem was. They stood down the helicopter, stood down the on inshore lifeboat. Um, they both returned. And, um, yeah, they, they took me back. They got me wrapped up in, like, a, a foil blanket. And, um, yeah, they did some basic first aid and medical checks on me as we were going back to shore. About a 10-minute rib ride back to Coon Martin Beach. And... Uh, yeah, during that time, the adrenaline sort of wore off. I was feeling safe and my body just turned to jelly. I was emotional to the point of near tears. I, you know, I, I just physically sick. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a tough day. And um, what you're about to see is certain clips of what happened. Um, the full video is approximately an hour and 10 minutes long. I'm going to break it down to some key moments, um, some key points of today's trip, so you can get an idea of what happened, where I went wrong, and um, yeah, see it firsthand what happened, and uh, how good Barry was at staying calm. You know, an experienced sea kayaker, he knew exactly what to do, um, and he done a lot of things right, and uh, I, on the other hand, done a lot of things wrong. Um, the only good thing I did do is I had the best radio I could possibly afford, which was a radio with the DSC function. DSC actually works on um, satellite signals. It doesn't rely on VHF radio waves. So regardless of where you are in the world, whether you've got VHF signal or not, when you hit that DSC button, it will ping the Coast Guard and they will know exactly where you are because it's got built-in GPS, it pings them the location. In fact, it is so accurate, when the um, guys were taking me back in the shore, they said, was this where you were when you pressed the button? I said, yeah. He said, well, that's fantastic then because the coordinates we got sent from your radio was within two meters of where we found you. So that's how accurate it is, that's how quick it is. As I say, within six minutes, we had a full rescue. Um, and it, it was a day to remember. It, it was a day that I'm definitely never gonna forget. And it's a day that has taught me things that I probably should have learned before this even happened. You know, before I ever attempt to go out on the sea again, I'm gonna get a, a one day kayak course to learn self rescue, to learn some basic skills. Um, to learn a bit about tides and currents and what weather conditions are safe to go out in, that sort of thing. I'm also going to, you know, always go out in a wetsuit at least. Um, one, to keep me warm, two, to help with buoyancy, and three, because it might be a bit uncomfortable, but trust me, I'd rather have that hour or two of 
discomfort of the rub around my neck and you know the itchy and hot fabric I'd rather have that than what I went through today because although adrenaline helps numb some of what you're going through um, the panic is real and it is proper scary even for a bloke of my size and you know the stuff I get up to in my life I, I generally don't have fear but that scared the living hell out of me um, you feel completely helpless when you're being thrown around by you know the waves and the currents taking in water every time you know a wave crashes over your head um, yeah super scary and the relief I felt when I heard that sea king and then boats in the distance coming in I'll never forget it I nearly broke down right there on that beach it was incredible and um, yeah it, a lot of lessons learned um, if you're new to kayaking never go out alone if you can do a course if you can afford it, get a DSC radio, um, PLBs, I mean, I carry flares. I went over the top with safety gear, which eventually did prove to be the right move and has saved my life today. Um, but the other thing was going out with Barry, going out with an experienced kayaker, because if I'd been on my own today, um, it could very well have been a very different you know, outcome. Uh, the panic would have been heightened because I was on my own. I didn't have someone there saying you're doing well, you know, do this, do that. I didn't have that. I wouldn't have had that. And I would have probably gone into overdrive panic. And, you know, if I tried to swim to shore and found out I couldn't make it because of the current, because of, you know, the conditions, I would have then been without my kayak. And, um, yeah, I, w I would have definitely been um, a body recovery rather than, you know, a rescue, which it turned out to be today. So what you're about to see, as I say, is some of the, the footage from today. Um, as I say, please, if, if you take anything away from this video, take away the, you know, the things I did wrong and make sure you don't make the same mistakes because you might not be so lucky. Um, you know, the weather can change, the conditions can change just like that. And you need to be absolutely prepared for that. And you need to be experienced enough or be with someone experienced enough to to be there if something should go wrong, because eventually it will go wrong. Um, you can't ride your luck forever. Things happen, and today, all these little you know circumstances, all these little things that I did wrong, all lined up perfectly with the weather conditions, and it turned into the perfect storm. And um, one that I'm I feel blessed and very lucky to have you know come out of the other side. You know, um, I mean, what is it now? It's half past seven at night now, and this was at 10 o'clock this morning. And although I'm safe now, I still feel awful. I look awful. Um, you know, I'm in pain with my arms and legs and my chest. Um, inhaled a lot of water. Um, and the embarrassment as well, being brought back with your kayak in tow to a crowded beach of onlookers. Um, to be greeted by a, you know, a Coast Guard vehicle with its blue lights on and paramedics, it's it's embarrassing. But at the same time, it is it's a, a massive, massive learning curve, and it's something I'm never going to do again. And it's put me off going in the sea until I'm I'm completely confident in my ability. And uh, I know men are worse for this than women, but please, everyone, if you are one of these people that are like me and pretty gung ho and pretty indestructible and think you can manage anything you can't and mother nature will prove that to you and um i really really hope you guys get something from this um if you do please give it a thumbs up because of the massive expense that i would imagine the rnli went through today launching helicopters and number of vessels and mans power and stuff um, I am going to do a GoFundMe. I'd like to thank them for what they've done today. They did save my life, and I'm sure, you know, you guys are all absolutely blessed to have such a great service that can come out if we do get into trouble. So there is a GoFundMe. I'm going to leave a link for that down in the description if you'd like to donate. Um, I just want to give something back to them because, you know, without them and without my equipment and without Barry, I would not be here to tell you about this story. 
As I say, it's embarrassing for me. I feel ashamed. I feel completely angry with myself. It was all my own doing. No one else to blame. And as I say, you guys can call me what you like. Um, it's done. I'm safe. Um, but I feel pretty shit about it. So, uh, I say, watch these next few clips. Um, they're a few minutes long, so it won't. This video won't go on much longer, I promise. I know you've been stood here or sat there watching me just mumble along for the last 20 minutes, but um, it's just something I feel I had to share with people to get the message out that the sea is not to be messed with, regardless of how good of a swimmer you are. Uh, you know, even professional yachtsmen get into trouble, so even an experienced car could probably learn something from this. You know, if you don't feel great the day you go out, it could all go wrong, you know. So, as I say, heed my warning. Take this on board and um, certainly learn from what you're about to see. Um, as I say, please give the video a thumbs up if you get something from it. I know a lot of you are going to thumbs it down because you think, what a twat, why did you do that? But it is what it is. And um, as I say, this is an educational video. And I really, really hope you guys learn from it. So, uh, for now, I'm going to go and get myself a bottle of wine because I think I need a drink. And, uh, yeah, I can't get the taste of seawater out of my mouth. So, I'm hoping a nice bottle of white wine will fix that for me and heal some of this pain that I'm in in my upper body. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video where hopefully we have a more positive video to, to get into. So uh, stay safe, guys, and uh, remember, don't mess with the sea unless you know what you're doing and you're confident in your abilities because, as I say, it can all go wrong. So enjoy these clips, and I will see you guys on the next video.